<laughs> All right, everybody, welcome to Unscripted One-on-One -on -one, uh, from my soon-to-be studios in Hilliard, as we announced earlier, uh, but still in my basement. Um, but I have a special guest today, um, Annette Duncan. What, what an honor this is um, from the new film called Dolphin Island, and we will, uh, we will get into that in a minute. Let me just read a little bit of her bio real quick, and, and you all know I'm not real good at reading, but let me go ahead and, and read her bio. Uh, Annette Duncan was taught, she has taught English and critical thinking at, is it Car Carthage? Carthage. Uh -huh. Carthage College in Kenosha, Wisconsin for 33 years. Uh, she's also serving as a Title IX coordinator and leader of Academic Senate. Uh, while her stage acting and musical theater experience spans the past three decades, in the past two years, she stepped into a world of film and television, appearing in television, pr television productions such as People Magazine Investigates, which is very interesting. I want to know more about that. Um, <laughs> in commercials and print products for companies such as Stainmaster, is it Coors? Uh, Coors. Coors. Coors and Apple, and in various documentaries and films. In her latest feature film, Dolphin Island, which we will speak about today, uh, she enjoyed playing the role of Cheryl Williams, uh, though originally from Nebraska, and that has lived for many years in Franklin, Wisconsin, with her husband, Reverend David Duncan, Church of City, Milwaukee. And this is amazing to me. They have seven children and seven grandchildren and counting, it says. <laughs> so welcome to the show. Seven children. Uh, what's the mix? Can we just start there? What's the mix? Sure. Thanks, Aaron. First, I want to say how excited I am to be here with you and to talk about Dolphin Island and things close to my heart. I, and certainly my kids and grandkids are close to my heart. Um, we have, uh, it, it's girl, girl, boy, boy, girl, girl, boy. And wow. my, my youngest son was so mad at me that I didn't just even it out that he let me let the girls win. But uh, <laughs> four girls three boys. Right now we have um, five granddaughters. They're all very little and uh, two grandsons. Um, but that's, th those are just from our first two children so far. So we're, we're uh, blessed. <laughs> wow. I can't imagine. So Christmas must be crazy at your house. <laughs> it's so crazy. <laughs> It's so crazy. In fact, this year, to be honest, we decided to split it into three different um, actual celebrations. Um, one sort of kid-centered, one, um, uh, they, they called it the singles Christmas, my kids that aren't married. And uh, just kind of, we also all got together, of course, for a meal and that sort of thing. But uh, it it's a house full when we have everybody here. I imagine. So what made you, and we'll get into the film because that's really the, the core of what we're going to talk about is Dolphin Island, which honestly, in, in a world that we're in right now with so much negativity, so much frustration, so much, it was such a refreshing film for me. My, my family and I watched it last week and my wife and I, and uh, we really just, I, I just enjoyed, first of all, she loved the location and we'll talk about that. I'm sure <laughs> the location was gorgeous, but um the just the refreshing simplicity of the film was was wonderful. So what made you from going in academia to to say, you know, what, I think I want to get into acting. What what made you make them make that shift? Um, well, part of it is, of course, that I've had a dream in my heart. Mm -hmm. And when I went to college, I wanted, I was acting, I wanted to go into acting, but um, I honestly, I was a little bit afraid. I mm -hmm. hadn't learned to quite jump into life like I have in, in recent years. And so I went the safe route, which turned out to be the absolutely perfect route for me. And that is teaching. I discovered that I have both a gift and a passion for teaching. And I've been very um, uh, blessed to, to be able to touch lives and, and to um, make a difference in that way for so long. But I always loved the acting and I would do, I would, um, participate in musicals, uh, first in Nebraska, where I lived initially, and then here in the Milwaukee area, because Franklin is a suburb of Milwaukee. And uh, absolutely loved it, kind of helped keep me a little bit sane as I uh, worked full time and had the seven, seven kids. Um, but I, uh, I didn't really know how to get in film, to be honest. It, it just seems like the secret world that yeah. there are keys to and I didn't 
I didn't have them. And then my daughter very handily married an actor from Hollywood. And uh, so that, that gave me a key right there. And what I discovered, they, they were living in Hollywood, but they ended up moving back to Milwaukee, at least temporarily, because they were having children. And it's, it's really um, not impossible, but really a challenge to be two actors raised in Hollywood. Yeah. So they moved back here and he started a film school. And um, though I felt sheepish about it, I said, I'd like to support you. I'd like to join. And, uh, and they said, wonderful. So um, we, I started taking the um, on-camera classes, discovered that film acting is extremely different from stage acting. I had to relearn so many habits. Mm -hmm. And um, then we, he got me onto Actors Access and Backstage and a few of the um, uh, sort of platforms that actors use to submit for breakdowns. And the world just opened. It just wow. opened. And, and I felt so grateful. And uh, so it's been, it's been uh, dizzying how quickly um, this has become part of my life. I, I love it. And I hope that it, it just keeps increasing, though I don't want to lose anything in, in uh, other parts of my life. I just hope that this keeps increasing. That's awesome. What, what, I mean, what, what an opportunity, since that was in some ways your first love to, to eventually make that journey to, to have that, those doors open up for you. And, and especially in a film like, like Dolphin Island, um, just, it's just such a nice film. I mean, it just, it, you, are, are you, are you pleased with, I imagine you're very pleased with, with the, the film. I am so beyond pleased, Aaron. I expected it to be good and the location and the cinematography, I, I assumed would be beautiful because I could see as we were filming, I would go behind the cameraman sometimes at, at a safe distance and uh, watch what, what they were actually seeing. And I was, we were all just saying, oh, that's breathtaking, that's breathtaking. But the talent that has combined on this film yeah. um, in all areas, uh, uh, camera, directing, um, the, the stage managing and the, the um, actors and everything, uh, it's come together in a way that um, it was stunning. When we watched it, there were actually, I hope people don't mind if I share this, there were a number of us with tears in our mm -hmm. eyes because um, of course our red carpet event was virtual thank you covid right uh, <laughs> but it was still fabulous it was fabulous and and we were uh, as i say stunned at how it all came together um the the beauty the power like you say the simplicity it's mm -hmm. not a it's not a, a a film that tries to dazzle you it's a film that that tries to speak to you yeah. and i think does so extremely successfully um, and, and as kind of a segue, I want to say what we were talking about a minute ago with um, sort of a deeply held, long held dream coming to pass that has tied in beautifully with what Dolphin Island, sort of some of the themes behind it to try to live true to what you dream and what you hope and what you believe. Um, and even though it looks like it might be a little rocky, um, you just, you, you persevere and, uh, and, and it happens, it happens, yeah. good things come. So um, my life and the film have uh, dovetailed in that respect. I imagine, and I imagine your role as uh, a grandmother in the film of of the young who the young actress was fantastic. Oh, wasn't she? She's she so was talented. fantastic. I mean, she's you know she's kind of the center of the story. That and and obviously the dolphins were amazing. And oh, so I want to get into yeah. that in a minute. But but she was fantastic. She just and as a dad of of girls, um, and, and I have a son and two daughters. Uh, as a dad of of two girls, I, I just I loved her. I just thought she was the best. And uh, she was so wonderful. So as a as a mom of of seven, I have to think that that help as you as you were into that role, and, and now grandparent. But uh, as you were playing that role, did that that certainly had to help? 
Absolutely. Well, she, because my grandkids are, are little um, and uh, my oldest son just left his teen years, she felt closer. I really kind of drew on, on my, my uh, sense of being a mother, which every mother knows is um, all consuming and so powerful. And uh, what was so beautiful, uh, Taylor Jade Nixon, the, the actress who played Annabelle, um, she is a, a delightful and warm and uh, hospitable, I'll call her. She's always wanting to make connections with people on and off set. And she is um, just full of life in lots and lots of ways. And so she was very easy to connect to. And, um, and we developed, I believe, even though it was within a, a very limited amount, just a few weeks of time, we, we developed a relationship that definitely played into the movie. As, as I was talking to her, as I was acting, there was a real sense of love, both connectedness, a mother loving her children, but also just Taylor. She's, she's, she's fabulous. So um, that made my part really easy, yeah. <laughs> And it's interesting you said that because as I think back to the movie and watching it, it, it feels like, and, and it may have just been the acting of it, but I really feel like as the movie progressed, your relationship with her progressed from the, the moment you all, and I don't want to give spoilers out. I want people to go see the movie. So I don't want to tell the whole story of the movie, but from the moment you all arrive on the scene in the beginning and introduce yourself to her a little bit, to the scene, um, and I believe you were all were sitting and correct me if I'm wrong, you all were sitting on like a, a tree um, you know, you know, the scene I'm talking about um, where there, there was a really heartfelt moment between the two of you on that, that uh, reliving some of the story of what would have been her parents, um, that there was, that was a deeper connection in the beginning when you all came on scene. So I think some of that was acting, but it sounds like some of that was just you all getting to know each other and really having a comfort level, but it really played out on, on film well. Yeah, it, it, uh, it's not impossible if you don't have that to call on the acting skills, but when that warmth and that relationship has been developing and when you really do care about the person who uh, you're, you're acting out the scene with, um, it, it becomes a, a simple matter to, uh, in fact, a lot of times when um, a film is being made, a scene will have lots and lots of takes. If you have a lot of characters, it's not um, out of the question to have 15, 20 takes minimally. I'm sure you know that. But, um, but that particular scene, we, I, I, I can't remember, it may have been the first take. It was the first or second take. Wow. Were, it was just, and, and, and even Taylor Jade said, you know, she looked at me and she had tears in her eyes and she said, I felt that. And, yeah. and we did we really, really felt it between us. So, so yeah, it, it is, um, that's a gift. That's mm -hmm. a gift in the acting world to have that kind of relationship. And, <clears throat> you know, I'll just mention this too. There was not, and I can say this so genuinely, there was not a single person um, that I had a um, relationship with, anyone who was in the film, who I didn't have that same sort of um, connection with. They were all wonderful, wonderful individuals. Really a, an eclectic group. We had some people from California. We had some people from Florida. I'm from Wisconsin. Um, you know, just just. Um, I think somebody was from the Midwest somewhere. Um, but uh, very eclectic group. Interestingly, um, uh, the one who played Desiree um, is also from Milwaukee originally. So so we had two of us who were original um, Milwaukeeans. And uh, yet, even with all the differing experiences, uh, we, I think some of it was because we were sort of cut off from the rest of the world. Yeah. We were there in that place, which is probably not quite how people would imagine it, uh, in part because of the hurricane. Yes. Through not too long before that. So we were kind of marooned in a good sense. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I think that helped us to uh, form into a family and yeah. uh, gel. And you really see that in the film. I mean, you know, I think especially um, 
you know, with with the small cast, you could really see that. I'm telling you, I got a little teared up when when I don't want to spoiler alert when she when she was saying goodbye. I got a little teared up when she's walking down the deck. That was a hard moment. I mean, there yeah. was, and, and again, I, you know, I, I was found myself emotionally attached uh, to the moment, which I think speaks to all of you and bringing us into the story a little bit. And uh, it was, it was, it was, it was powerful. I, I literally got, got emotionally attached <laughs> to, oh, to her saying goodbye. And I was a little angry that anyway, I don't want to get spoiler alert. I don't want to, I don't want to spoil the movie. You're going to watch it. All right. So, um, so let me ask you this. You, you mentioned the hurricane. I think the hurricane, a hurricane came through to the Bahamas. So this is on location in the Bahamas. Is there really a dolphin Island in the Bahamas or was that just a, cause I think there might be right or no. You know, if there is, I am not aware of it, but okay. I am, I'm an English professor, not a geography professor. <laughs> so, so I won't swear by it, but uh, we were on um, Freeport. And uh, there, I know there are a number of islands, so there could be a dolphin island, but um, certainly dolphins are native to that area. And uh, um, there was um, a, uh, uh, oh, there's a technical term that they used, but it's like a, a home for the dolphins. It's not like a zoo type of place. It's okay. a natural habitat mm -hmm. where they uh, have them there and, work with them and train them but they're still able to have wonderful and very free happy lives and so um it was it was uh, yes it was in freeport there and beautiful the water you could see to the bottom i mean just the the boat scenes incredible and, and just and i just i probably should have done this at the beginning the dolphin dolphin island tells the story of, of a, a a daughter uh who has lost her parents she's living with one of her grandparents on a boat basically and being raised at this location called dolphin island um the rest of it you'll have to see <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> spoiler alert but no it's it's a beautiful film it's a special relationship between the grandfather and the daughter the daughter um is is just awesome um and she does just a fantastic job of really it, it's just fun it's a simple uh beautiful film about friendship about family about um, uh, just, it's just such a refreshing thing in the time that we're in right now. Um, so, so as you were filming, you said the, the hurricane went through, were they, were they repairing from the hurricane while you were filming? Um, it had gone through a number of months before, but, um, because of the isolated nature of the island, since it is very much an island, I'll have to tell you about how we got there in uh, in just a moment. That was an adventure, but uh, um, because it's it's isolated and because the hurricane was so devastating to the island, and they were trying to recuperate emotionally and economically and everything, they were still very much in repair mode. For example. Um, one of the challenges that I, I felt so bad for sort of our executive crew, because um, there were two things that they really had to fight in the midst of this. Um, one, under some very stringent timelines, they had to fight things like um, spotty or non-existent internet. Mm. Um, normally, uh, for example, if you are changing a call time or you're sending out the call sheet for the next day or whatever, um, it's no big deal. You just go on email or text or whatever and you just send it out to your prefab list to your actors and everybody knows what's going on and where to be and when to be and we're all there. But here, uh, there were uh, many days and nights and many places in the resort, beautiful resort where we all stayed, where there was no internet access. And so literally they would have to get people to run to different rooms and run around the complex. If something changed, I remember at one point, um, Carbuckle, the lawyer, uh, delightful, mm -hmm. delightful great. actor, always oh, so funny. And he's that way in life too. But uh, he had been given a day off. And so he was out swimming in the ocean and then things changed with, you know, outside the control of, of the uh, producers and so forth. And uh, so somebody had to swim out and get him and say, you're needed on set, you know. And, and so uh, the, the lack of 
of um, reliable or even existent technology because of what was being repaired. The fact that there were no, uh, you couldn't just go to the store. Mm -hmm. There was a little tiny um, on-site sort of convenience store that if you like little individual packets of oatmeal um, for four dollars each, um, then you could you could buy one of those and and eat. Um, but uh, for the most part, um, there there was not much unless you could get a car to go down to the the main part of the city, and um, so that was a challenge. Weather was also a challenge. I think they managed to make everything look beautiful beautiful the, gorgeous yeah, the yep. film just oh and it was beautiful but it wasn't consistently beautiful there were lots mm. of days where there was intense wind or uh, a deep cold front cold front for the bahamas <laughs> or <impressive>. um <laughs> yeah or uh you know uh, complete um cloud cover suddenly when we had to shoot a film that required shoot a scene that required uh, sunlight and so they were having to adjust everybody. They were troopers. They did it beautifully and professionally and they made it work. Mm. But it was it was a challenge, partly because the island was still under repair. Mm. Um, when we first got there, do you mind if I just kind of go off Aaron and tell you? No, hey, we're, it's unscripted. That's the beauty okay. of it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> unscripted. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, of course, I, I'd never been to the Bahamas and I didn't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. And um, so they said that uh, I got to a hotel in Florida and they said that those of us who were in the Florida hotel would be taken by a... Um, it's basically like a medium sized to small boat um, uh, over over to Freeport and the next morning. And then late that night, we all found out that that boat had been canceled and um, it was, it's called a Bellaria. And the Bellaria was canceled for um, the next day and for the foreseeable future because of high winds. But we had to be there, you know, the show must go on. And so they really scrambled and what they were able to find was a, um, a little four seater uh, um, prop plane. And uh, so the, the <laughs> producer called and he said, Annette, I don't really know you yet, but are you up for this? I'm like, yes, yes, it sounds like such a, an adventure. <laughs> so we all packed ourselves, four of us into the little four seater and about probably just a lot of luggage, let's just say that. And, <laughs> um, and flew over to the Bahamas. At one point, the, the pilot who was Bahamian um, said, uh, um, Oh, look, look, if you look around right now, you can't see land anywhere. And I started to happily look and then it hit me what he was saying. <laughs> I wasn't sure I liked it that moment, but it was gorgeous. But as we, uh, as we descended and came into the airport, and of course, when you get out, you expect customs and we were prepared for that. What I wasn't prepared for was that the airport had been destroyed by oh, no. the, um, yeah, by the um, hurricane. And they had not been able to do anything except to set up a little um, tent, which was customs and, wow. and one, actually over two people sitting there. And um, at, you know, as we're flying in, just looking at parts of the island were untouched. Part, you know, so so you know, I cannot wait to go back. Let's just put it that way, because um, in the places that that are untouched, there is so much beauty. The people of the Bahamas are unbelievably warm and they reach out to you. They, it's part of their culture, their makeup. I don't know what to just be so positive and so mm. welcoming. And, and so, so to be there was such a beautiful experience until you had to go to the, because we had to, because yeah. we were filming the portions that were not yet repaired. And um, I just remember thinking, oh, Lord, you know, the fact that human beings um, went through them and the fact that their spirits are so resilient mm. to pick up and to, to do the best they can to keep going. For us, it was a minor challenge yeah. to not have the internet. For them, 
it means um, that it's going to add months and months mm -hmm. to uh, their lives becoming normal again. Mm. So, um, so it was, it was eye opening and sobering. We got into the car, our wonderful driver, who's Bahamian came and he, he gave us some limited commentary as we drove through those parts. Um, and I, I won't go into all the sad details, but I will say that, um, that it was very sobering and it made me extremely happy that, that Dolphin Island has been filmed there. It's yeah. supporting um, their economy. It's supporting those beautiful people. That's what they need. They need people yeah. to come in and have things um, be normal again and uh, um, stand with them. So that was, that was kind of a side, side thing, but a very important thing to many of us. It's, it's, I'm glad you went through that because I was going to ask you the question of, of because I believe that, that I, would, I would have to think that filming on location there had to help the local economy at, at some level. Um, so that's good to hear for sure. And, and I would think too, I was just thinking as you're speaking, so Nebraska, Wisconsin, and the Bahamas. Yeah. <laughs> three completely different right. geographical areas, I would think. Like, yeah. Um, right, yeah. <laughs> was your family or your husband able to come with you on location or was it just you? It was just me. Um, wow. Yeah, it wouldn't have been, uh, like I wouldn't have had time or emotional energy to um, have anyone else with me. And um, it, it, yeah, so we all just came uh, from our various families and places as individuals. And that, that again, that helped, I think, to yeah, bond us. For uh, sure. Yeah. Um, my, my roommate, Dion Williams, who played Desiree, um, uh, she and I, I think, I think both of us at the beginning were both um, people who, who kind of, we like others, but if you're going to live with somebody, you kind of look to see if, if you're going to trust them. And I think very quickly, we both decided, yeah, this is a beautiful human being. I oh, can trust, awesome. I can talk to, I can act with. And um, uh, yeah, uh, so it was it was just, just individual actors coming. Yeah. So I've given my um, two second review or, or thoughts on the film. For anybody listening to this, if so, what what would you say is the story of Dolphin Island? What would you hope the takeaway would be from Dolphin Island? One, uh, there, well, first of all, I'll say that there are a number of themes. Of course, mm -hmm. being an English professor, I'm always looking for themes, right. and uh, there are a number of, of themes that are are strong and. Uh, very well conceived and well developed in yeah. this film. Kudos yeah. to um, the writers. And I know, for example, our director, Mike Disa, was doing a number of um, uh, rewrites and adaptations um, of, of the script as we were on location. And, um, you know, it was organically becoming stronger and tighter even as we were filming. And um, it, it, one of the, themes I think that um, rises to the top for me that has great importance for me, and I hope people take away, is, is this idea I alluded to before. And that is um, life is about so much more than doing the things that are expected of you, just yeah. following in the, the steps of what you're supposed to do. And, um, you know, I, I'm going to go on a tiny rabbit trail um, because <laughs> in my, <laughs> in my uh, <laughs> um, uh, classes, especially the, the critical thinking classes, um, I usually start out with asking students what they think is the primary reason that they're there at college. And they're very normal college students. And so it's almost always one of two things. The noble thing to say, of course, is to expand my horizons, you know, to, to, to extend my way of thinking. Yes, definitely. But when it really comes down to it, most people would not um, take that kind of time and pay that kind of money just to expand their horizons. Unfortunately, what it, what it boils down to is I, I kind of didn't know what else to do. I graduated and that's what everybody was doing. And you need a college degree to get a job, to get um, 
a, a career and to make money to get things like a house. And, you know, it's, it's this list that our culture says, you must do this. Yeah. And if you're missing a link, like if you don't make a good amount of money, for example, then, um, then you're not going to be happy. Mm-hmm. And that is just not true. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not anti-money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, right. we, all, we all live in, in an economy, but I am very pro find who you are find what you're meant to be where you're meant to be sort of find your calling on this earth and pursue it with everything you've got trying really hard not to worry about expectations of others or general assumptions of society and in dolphin island we see uh, of course taylor jade nixon uh, her character annabelle had been raised by her parents when she was little in this place called Dolphin Island, and she had known nothing else. And then when um, her parents died, and that's not a spoiler because that's sort of pre-movie, right? Right, Um, right. When her parents died, um, her paternal grandfather who had been given custody had a choice, a big choice, Mm -hmm. whether to do the easy thing and bring her back to um, England. He was a professor at Oxford to bring her back to England to the safe and financially you know, stable and, and um, predictable uh, environment. And um, you know, certainly a lot of people would consider that a fabulous and wonderful upbringing. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying it's not, mm-hmm. but for her and for the dreams that her parents had for her, um, this, this Dolphin Island place was a place that nurtured love. It nurtured happiness. Kind of, you know, very much as I'm talking, the Bahamas themselves. You right. know, that's, For sure. that's the way they are. Um, yeah. I, I think of, a <laughs> um, little, little side story. I think of one morning I had to try to go to the bank because ATMs were not necessarily working. And so I had to find a bank and it supposedly opened at nine. And so I had to find a driver to take me off set. I promised I'd be back in one hour. And, and the driver drove me to downtown Freeport and I found a bank. And I got in line outside with everybody. And it was like old home week. You know, people were just going by, hey, how you doing? Yeah, blah, 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 blah. And they're just talking to each other and talking to me. I didn't mm-hmm. belong there, obviously, but they were, they were including me and offering me to be part of their lives in, in crazy ways. I even got a marriage proposal. It was interesting. <laughs> but uh, in front of the ATM. But uh, I mean, he was joking. But it's fine. And uh, so we were, we were having a great time. And then I looked down and I'm like, Oh wait, it's it's about seven minutes after nine, and in Milwaukee, that means that you know there's been a, a pandemic or something that enables us not to open. But uh, seven after, and I said, "Excuse me, um, when does this open?" And somebody said, nine or or whenever." <laughs> I was just right. like, part of me wanted awesome. to be like, oh, oh, yeah. "I promised I'd be back on set in an hour," and then part of me is like. You know, self will survive and yeah. these people have it right. It's mm. it's free, it's relaxed, it's yeah. loving. You know, they're still making progress toward their goals. The bank did open about 10 after nine. But uh, it, was, um, it was so free and warm and wonderful. And for Jonah, the paternal grandfather, to choose to leave behind the expectations to become a professor at Oxford is, let's just say, no easy task, right? right. And to right. leave that behind mm-hmm. and to go live on a boat and raise a little girl in the Bahamas with uncertainty, with um, uh, just, you know, living outside of being judged, I guess, mm-hmm. by some mm-hmm. elements of society. Um, for him to do that and to have the beautiful results that he did um, is something that I hope people take seriously. Not all of us have the opportunity to go to the Bahamas and raise a child on a boat and there forever, you know, but, but we may have a, a choice or several smaller choices during the course of a day. Like I think, I think of myself as a mother or, and one of the things I'm a little better at as a grandmother sometimes 
is stopping to take a few moments to appreciate and to play, you know, with, I, I have one granddaughter who is a budding photographer. She's forever stealing her father's iPhone and taking pictures and sending them to me. And I can stop, even though I'm in the middle of you know, something intense at work, I can say, she's really important. Mm -hmm. This is really what life is. This meeting, it'll still be there, but, but she's growing. And I need to grab hold of this rich moment and live in it. And so I hope people think about that as they, they watch Dalton Island. At least that's one of the things I hope they think. And I did. I mean, I think when I watched it, you know, the, the simplicity of and, and challenges of, of, you know, they live on a boat. I mean, that, that was their home. So I, I do love that they didn't put them up in some huge mansion and tell the story about how, you know what I mean? I love that it was, they were on a houseboat and it was very small, but that's all they needed because it got back to the core of what really matters. And their relationship was so fantastic. And I, I, I would have to assume it was that way in real life because it was, it really, just like yours, you know, your moment um, that you all had, I, I felt like their relationship was really special. And, and I, again, I, I felt myself cast in that role, you know, with my own girls or, you know, when they with grandchildren, I mean, you, you just have this um, loving spirit for someone that's under your care. That's, that's, and, and I just, I really, really loved how that played out. And again, it made the scene when the, on the, <laughs> spoiler alert, <laughs> um, you know, it was just, it was really special. And, the, and we haven't even touched on the dolphins. The dolphins were incredible. So what was it like working with the dolphins? I mean, it because was... they're, they're part of the movie. Yeah, oh, they're a huge part. In mm -hmm. fact, um, I aspire to be the kind of actor that a dolphin is <laughs> in, in future years, and I'm only partially kidding. Um, <laughs> they, they um, you know, when I first got there, just to see them swimming around and, and everything was amazing, but when they actually started um, having them do things for the film, they were so amazingly on cue wow. and, and they're so smart, Aaron. They're so smart. I mean, we've heard that, yeah. but to watch it, for example, um, uh, our, one of our wonderful producers gave us as a thank you, anybody in the cast and crew who wanted to, um, an afternoon of swimming with the dolphins in oh. the ocean. Ah, it was just so, unbelievable. And, um, you know, as we're, we're out there, uh, they would uh, have them do different things. If you raise your arms in a certain way, they'll do a particular trick or they'll swim up and give you a kiss or, you know, those kinds of things. And um, I had one dolphin in particular who I did most of my little things with. From that moment on, whenever I would walk along that dock, that dolphin, no matter where he was, would swim up, come up, start talking to me, nodding. I mean, he knew me from then wow. on. I was wow. his friend out of all those people. And um, to me, that's, I don't, I don't even recognize humans that well sometimes. <laughs> you know? right, uh, right. But uh, I, I know the face, can't remember your name. You know? New, but, new uh, this. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, but they, you know, and, and um, I, I honestly, I'm, perhaps it happened when I was not around, but I honestly never saw a dolphin miss a cue. Mm. And so they were, they were just a joy and a delight and, and amazing to work with. Yeah. That was, that was awesome. Cool. That had to be a bucket list. This, this has, to, I mean, just, just talking through it and listening to it, I, this had to be a bucket list item for you. One to, to be in this now, you know, this space that you always wanted to be in, Oh, by the way, it's in the Bahamas with dolphins that are awesome right. and a cast that's awesome. Like that had to, re this had to really be special for you. It it's almost, uh, who, what could top this? <laughs> it's, yeah, it's true. It, it was so wonderful. I, um, I was laughing the other day because it's been, it's been exactly a year since we were filming. And in fact, on my, my, uh, Google Photos memories, things are popping up today and this morning. I'm like, oh, you don't know. And uh, so, um, but a, a little more than a year ago, um, I can't remember if it was 
November-ish, um, they had sent out the breakdown. And when you're an actor, you apply to lots of breakdowns if they right. fit you and, and what you're trying to do. And then what you have to do, I've learned, is let it go. You know, you may get a callback, but then you just have to put it out of your mind yeah. and never think about it again, because the vast majority, even for people who are um, absolute A-list actors, if you've read articles about how many things they've auditioned for that they don't get, um, you know, it's it's uh, um, it will tear you apart if you're mm. like, oh, I've got to have that. Oh, I wonder if you just you, you do your best and then you let it go and wow. you're thankful for the opportunity. So um, I remember sitting, looking at the breakdowns. I was starting to apply. It was late at night. And my, my youngest son, um, who at that time was a sophomore in college, came in and uh, I, I started laughing and he said, what is it? And I said, here's one that's filming in the Bahamas. What would you think if your mom took off to the Bahamas to make a movie? And he's both like, ha, 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 ha. And uh, so I applied to it and I got a call back, which kind of freaked me out. And so um, I, I did the, uh, of course, virtual call back. And um, then I, I just let it go and didn't even think about it again. And that was, that was I believe, November. And then in... Um, uh, early January, I was actually teaching a class, a night class at uh, Carthage, and um, I, I see an email pop up from the producer saying, um, you know, can you give me a call as soon as possible? And I'm like, ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I had to act all yeah, right. slow. Yes. Oh, oh, film in the Bahamas? Yeah, sure, I can do that. Ah! You know, I just scream. I literally scream. People yeah. are surprised. The Class, let's take like, five. Yeah. <laughs> let's take five. I got to answer this. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> so, and, yeah, I know. And, and they, uh, I, they, they were also a good part of it, too, because I ended up having to do my class virtually for the last portion oh, of wow. the class to start filming and this was before covid so nobody oh, was wow. doing class virtually yeah. but they were all so excited they were like yes yes and and it turned out just just fine they they got good education and i got to be in film but uh so so anyway yeah then when it actually unfolded it was it was really surreal actually the fact mm. that I kept having to say, I'm in the Bahamas to make a movie, you know? <laughs> yes. And yes. Um, it was, it was um, definitely a bucket list. Definitely. Yeah. Oh, that's so great. I, I've so enjoyed our time. Honestly, this is so fun to see kind of behind the scenes. But um, I think the point of us being on here, because we could probably talk all night about things like this, but um, the point of us being on was the movie. So yes, yes. anyone listening to this podcast or, or watching it, how do they see the movie? When, when is it? Is it out? Where do they find it? All those good things. I'm I, Sorry, we probably should have talked about that. <laughs> no, no, that's good. I have been told that it will be released March 2nd. Okay. And, and the only thing that I was told was all outlets. Okay. So I imagine it will be very easy to find. Okay. Um, I'm guessing places like Netflix, Hulu, and I probably shouldn't mention all of them because I don't want to prioritize any particular outlet. Okay. But, um, you know, certainly if someone were to uh, just Google Dolphin Island uh, near the release date, they would be able to see places that, um, or, or venues that they could get to the movie. So um, yeah, it's coming soon. It's yes, just- Yes, it's right around the corner. And I'll, 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 I'm sure they've sent me links that I'll, I'll make sure I have in my blog post. Um, right. to be so. <laughs> I'll, no, I'm just kidding. I'll put it in my blog post. I'm, I'm really excited. Um, I think it's such a warm and, and heartwarming film. Again, as I said before, for a time like this, um, it, you know, I've got, you're in Wisconsin, so you probably have a few feet of snow on the ground. We have a couple inches on the ground outside. It's cold. This is a really good chance to see some beautiful landscape, but also, I mean, honestly, the landscape's gorgeous, but the story is really special. And it's just, it's, it, as I said again, and I don't mean that in any other way, it's respectfully, I say it's very simple. It's not transformers, there's not explosions. It's, 
it's just a really cool story and it really tugs at the heartstrings and uh, you did a great job. I, I, the, the producers, everybody, this has just been such an honor to have you on and to just meet you and, and hear about the backstory behind this whole thing has been wonderful. It's been a joy, Aaron. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Well, I will have all this. Is there any other links that you want to share for you personally outside of the film? Is there anything that I need to include in the blog post for you personally? I don't, I don't think so. Right now, my main hope is that people will be able to access and will, will find Dolphin Island. I, I really think they'll be surprised at how much they love it, yeah. uh, like if they, how heartwarming it is. And like you said, especially at this time, um, I don't know if I have 30 seconds to tell one more story. Absolutely. Really... It's unscripted. Okay. You have all night. No, okay. <laughs> it's all yours. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I had an experience that to me ties into the movie a few days ago. Um, I have one, one class Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and it turned out that my schedule, um, that class was my only Wednesday class. And I thought, well, maybe they just want to go virtual because, you know, students are always wanting to get out of class. And, yeah. and I thought that would, that would, and so I presented it to them. I said, would you like to um, in class Monday and Friday and be virtual on Wednesdays? Would that be nice with your schedules? There was a time of silence. And then one young woman said, I hate to say it, but this is the most normal life gets in this class. And somebody else mm-hmm. said, yeah, absolutely. We and pretty soon the entire I, I teach in the small auditorium, and the entire auditorium was full of students with one voice saying to me, "We want to be together. Mm-hmm. Human connection and human relationships right. are what matter to us right now." In just mm-hmm. a poignant way. And as I was thinking about the film coming out right at this time, the fact that it's a family film, the mm-hmm. fact that that. Grandma, grandpa, mom, dad, kids, even little kids, the little kids will be enthralled by the the cinematography and the dolphins and everything. There is something for every age group and we can come together, we can watch it together, we can talk about it together. And um, it's a, it's a, a bonding and connecting thing, not an isolating thing that, yeah. that sometimes watching certain types of media can be but but i think right now this type of media is really good at bringing us uh together so yeah. do hope people find the film i know they'll love it if they uh, access it and watch it. and i will do my best to share and do my part because i think you're right and i think that's the story of the film that's as you said there's many um themes Yes. But one of the big themes is like, we have to be together. And there's those relationships are so important. Um, no matter what, you know, there's a variety of relationships in the film, but they're all important. And we need that more than anything. So this is such a great film for a time like this. And, and honestly, this has been such an honor for me. Thank you so, so much for coming on and, um, and sharing your story and, and just everything. I really, really appreciate this. And I look forward to the film and, and, and just God bless you and your entire family, all of them. And I hope they all get down to the Bahamas soon. (laughs) Thank you, Erin. Thank you. I've enjoyed this so much. And God bless you and yours. Thank you so much. God bless.